yeah it's like your profile and your portfolio so it's like one place you can go um that kind of aggregates all your activity in web3 um for metagame you'll be able to display your um scores in trustgrad um it'll show you all your down memberships and it'll show like about you what your skills are um nft art gallery maybe uh all this stuff so in the first version we'll probably be um stripping it down a lot uh for example probably won't have achievements um probably won't have activity uh we'll probably just have these down memberships um the about you and the skills contact info um that that's probably the minimal set of things to start with and then the idea is that this whole thing's going to be built up in a modular way so um we can continue to develop like essentially like mini plugins that um you know you can add new sections of your profile um so yeah and the collab button probably won't be there at the start um because we haven't really fleshed out exactly what that does um but yeah so there's this part of it which is the actual like character creation setup um the options we have here is um so our profiles are going to be built off three box um does anyone here not know what three box is is that one familiar yep yep cool um yeah so our profile is going to be built off of three box um with their new identities um we can now link multiple ethereum addresses to a single three box account so what that gives us is the ability for us to use something like magic um which allows people to just sign in with their email address and then um they click a link in the email address and they get set up with an account and like a web3 wallet so this is what i'm thinking of doing um because this allows people who aren't into who aren't already set up with an ethereum account to use these profiles um but at the same time anyone who already has uh three box or metamask or something they can also just log in with that um for github what it'll be is like all this all these things will kind of be linked through three box we probably wouldn't have the sign up here um once you actually sign in to three box you can see that they'll let you um they'll let you connect your github account here yeah this is what this looks like uh if you go to my details, you can see I have GitHub and Twitter as verified accounts. Um, so that's the sign up, uh, setting up profile. For skills, um, we'll likely have a set of predefined skills. Probably want to come up with like 100 or so of them. You can probably take a list from somewhere else. Um, and then it'll auto complete to one of those skills. And then if they can also add a custom skill that if, if, if they didn't find one that exists already, but ideally we want to minimize the use of custom skills because we'll be using these skills to filter and search players. So um, if you want to find players who are developers, it'll make, it'll be easy for that. Cause if there's like 10 different ways to write being a developer, then it'll be harder to do it so if it's like writing code programming uh development like there if we all want to kind of want to consolidate it um into one set um dress up your avatar i personally i don't think we we should have it right away um we can just use the profile pictures because these avatars won't really be used for anything um so this is more of a nice to have rather than actually something needed um have you guys thought about using some of the um images that were created by shargain like the little archer design people like the raid guild people for those avatars oh, yeah. 
yeah that's true um we could use those the problem is with that like we have to sort of solidify exactly what are the different character classes and what do they do and like what is your avatar really so i feel like that could come a bit later um like because right because right now it's a bit tricky like a lot of people are multiple different character classes so picking one avatar for your whole profile is a bit tricky um, so what you're saying yeah so you're saying yeah, like, i think the avatars if, should just be avatars and uh, skills and classes something else like random like they just, just a vi- visualization yeah they just get a random one or what like they just get whatever pops up not random not random but i don't think the the looks of your character should be directly connected to what you do okay yeah um but yeah, either way like since we aren't using avatars for anything right away uh we can just leave them out and use the profile pictures as a start um availability pretty straightforward personality type um so this is actually based off of uh the enneagram personality type test so um this is usually the one that's the quickest and easiest to do um so usually if you answer this you'll be able to figure out what which personality type you are and this is pretty cool because it lets you figure out which type of people you would be more like successful working with etc um and this is simply just like a selection of like an enum a set or one of you know a set of enums um yeah it's that thing membership so for this what we'll do is um there's actually we're using graph protocol for this um so we're gonna use the way that we'll find out which DAO's member is a part of is um the subgraphs so uh there is for example this is a DAO house subgraph this is what we can use to find out um given a certain eth address like what DAOs they're part of for moloch DAOs. um argon also has has a um subgraph for us um argon tokens mainnet and then you actually have to use two different subgraphs it's argon tokens mainnet and then argon so if, if multiple addresses are linked to an account we have to do it for each of these addresses right find all the yeah. apps yeah um so yeah ux wise actually if they log in with their email address before they have before they do this we probably want to ask them to link their other eth address um just so we can know what things they're a part of um so i i i think we can start with just looking up what's already connected before we want to have like the manual edition of guilds just cuz we don't have guild pages yet um so if we're starting with just profiles we can start with um you know just automatic picking up of whatever's on your profile um so yeah I, there's another argon one i i have a link in one of the github issues you should be able to find it there um and so the way that we're actually connecting all this data together um our back end is is based off of hasura um what this does is it lets us create like a mega graphql api that we can add other graphql apis as like remote schemas and then um we can join the data there with our data in our database um so as long as basically all we have to do is store our players like eth addresses and then we can set it up with like helper um functions to um load whatever um remote data we need and that would be through the subgraphs um and yeah i can dive a bit into hasura after we get through these um player type 
again, this is just like a selection of one of these three. Um, Peith, what do you think? Like, I, I know we have this player type and then we have this personality type. Do you want both? Yeah, this is the, the second one is more in like whether you tend toward chaos or order. So do you like to work on uh, new, the latest hacking projects or do you want something that uh, demands more structure? Something like that. So this is more related to the Dungeons and Dungeons and Dragons the archetypes. Yeah. Okay. Um yeah, so that's pretty much it. I guess is there any questions so far? Yeah, I got a question regarding the player types and personality types or and how we're gonna try how we're gonna utilize that uh later on. I mean, do we wanna create some sort of a matching in the background for people for whatever projects or something like that collaborations or do we expect people to actually i mean i don't know recognize like what is your type and then do the thinking themselves or anything around yeah. that so how do we plan to go about that so with uh, it's it's a bit trickier with this this i think is more so like you know if you're if we're assembling a team of people you probably want like, and depending on what phase the project is at, like, you know, you might be looking for a town planner type people. Like if you're looking, oh, you know, we have some stuff and we want to like get it into production and it's town planner. And then if we're looking for someone who's like more just like, you know, um, exploring or can help like explore and figure stuff out, maybe pioneer. Um, in terms of the Enneagram, like this is a bit more structured in terms of like, we can actually, like, if someone is a certain type, then we can say that they'll be good working with some other types. Whereas, like, if they're, you know, if you have two challengers on a team, then it might be not a great idea. Versus if you have, like, uh, a reformer or, like, a challenger and a peacemaker and an achiever, then, you know, there is. So we can use these sort of patterns to highlight something on the profiles. But initially, it'll probably just be like for the sake of filtering and searching. That's one thing actually I wanted to ask you, Marco, is like these are the profile pages of where you actually see the player. But I was wondering what you were thinking of for actually like exploring the list of players. So um, having like a way to filter by skills or yeah. filter by memberships um, that or filter by... Uh, availability or time zone just different kind of things there yeah yeah i mean I, that's that's the missing piece I, I think we need a dashboard for for the meta game like in general and i i even started like the wireframe for that uh before actually designing the the profiles so mm -hmm. I, I think that's the next step for us to do like we need some sort of a meta game dashboard where you where you can you, i don't know like preview all the activity going on in the meta game like from poor forums or discord or whatever i don't know and then from there you actually access those profiles hmm. so i guess on that dashboard there will be search for users or people or whatever filter and so on and so forth mm -hmm. yeah makes sense um, yeah but it's something we have to we have to yeah. discuss and and take to the next step yeah um yeah i think the i think having just a way to like see the list of players like to start with would be a pretty big step literally even if it's just a, a list of players no search no filtering or anything um because right now like it'll be pretty hard to discover what other players there are um so then having the list players would be a good first step and then like uh adding the filters and search that would be an another step the other step would be also the guild pages where i can click yeah. into meta cartel and see who the other players in the meta cartel but the guild guild pages are probably a bit more involved in terms of what else we want to show on there so i think like as a start for the sake of like this raid um having like just the thing for, that shows all the list of players would be pretty cool Maybe something yeah. that's like a minimal version of these cards, um, mm. potentially. 
Yeah, I mean, I raised this uh, topic before, uh, and it goes down to the whole information architecture and how we want to approach the whole thing, right? And yeah. like, we need to look at it as a whole thing rather than just the profiles. But we like to yeah. step and said, okay, let's do the profiles now because we're not, we want to hack on this. Okay, that's fine. But like, if we want to, you know, show the profile, the players, then we need a link for players. And then what happens if I click on that one? It opens the profile. How do I go back? You know, where's the main navigation? Yeah. Like, and then we go back to that main dashboard for the metagame or the main landing page or whatever, right? So. This definitely needs to be discussed in, in, in greater detail before we mm. move on to the next um, next step or for creating even the list of the pro, uh, players, right? Yeah. You know, otherwise it will be all over the place, you know, and <laughs> we're going to create a lot yeah. of mess and then we're going to rework uh, everything and then, you know, it's it's not, yeah. not a good approach. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, do you think that's something... Uh you can or we should work on a like kind of in parallel with these profiles during the hackathon yeah i think we could do that uh and then it's mainly about you know getting the structure of the pages the information architecture and what we can actually do and we can't do and then decide how is this going to be linked or connected or whatever and how we're going to how we want to guide a user you know or navigate through the whole metagame right yeah. so that's that we can do that i think so it's it's fine sounds good Cool. Um, all right. So uh, back to the code base. Um, so you'll see a few. It's it's set up as a monorepo essentially. Um, can you, can you all see this? All right, enough at least. Actually, maybe I should share my. Um. So yeah. Uh, there. There was this folder called App React. This was kind of the older version of just essentially like testing out how we can connect to these profiles using um, like three box web three or like MetaMask as like the auth mechanism, um, basic like GraphQL uh, stuff to like look up data. Um, but it was completely unstyled and this was more just like an experiment. Um, the full web app will actually be living in this web folder. Um, I merged this into master yesterday night. Um, so this is built off Next.js. Uh, right now, all it here, I can actually run it for you. Um, you can do yarn web dev. And it'll open it up. Um, of course, see it. But right now, it's a Pokemon, Pokemon graph, just as a demo. Um, so, Chris, I know you, um, you've you set up uh, this design system using Chakra UI. So yeah. uh, this is what we can start using. Um, I we'll basically be using this monorepo style to use all our all our different things so for example um in nextjs we want to set up like our global like uh app wrapper thing we can sort of import a uh, global style from at metafam slash ds which is like the design system um and then use that there and then we can create all of our buttons and components that we're going to be reusing uh, in there and then import them into the web app. Yeah, that was exactly my idea. To have like separate place where we can build just co visual components and mm -hmm. uh, like kind of to not even interrupt each other. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. That, uh, yeah. If you're showing something right now, it's I, I don't see anything on your screen. It's just gray. I don't know. If you're trying uh, to show us something. Can anyone else see anything? I can yeah. see it. I can see it. Yeah, I can see it. You can see? Okay. So then it's me. Okay. Um Yeah, so um the other parts of this repo, so uh we have our back end. This is what this is is a bunch of like handlers for Hasura's actions. So um, 
in Hasura, like you, you have like if you're familiar with GraphQL, you have queries and mutations. Um, actions are essentially like custom mutations where uh, we can have um, custom logic to uh, handle things that aren't just updating our database directly. So, for example, like we have the update our three box profile action. Um, this takes the player ID from like the authenticated session and then uh, returns the player's ETH address and then updates their profiles with um, any other like data we have. So uh, that's an example of that. Here's the auth webhook. So you can see that this is where um, we actually take the auth headers and then uh, do like the, we use the DID helper um, to verify that this token is legit. Uh, this is like three boxes, like decentralized identities. And then if it is, we assign them the role of player, give them a player ID. Um, sorry if I'm rushing through this, just have like, it's, a lot of this is probably confusing, but just wanted to like give you the lay of the land here. Um, so yeah, this backend essentially is all, all of our like custom business logic. This is where we will also have like our subgraphs. Um, we can create them as like, uh, endpoints over here. Um, this is just an express server essentially. Um, so yeah. Our, our Node.js slash Express server. So yeah, the, all this stuff can happen um, in here. And then Hasura, this folder is actually what um, controls like our our database schema and our migrations, which is like um, what are all the tables we have and how are they set up. So uh, the way you run this is um, Everything's all just set up in Docker. So if you run yarn docker start, it'll deploy the Postgres database, it'll deploy um, the Hasura engine, and it'll deploy this backend. Um, so it takes a sec. Um, and then once this deploys, what you can do is you can run yarn Hasura console. Wait for the back end to get up. Look, do it. Yeah, there'll be a bunch of warnings. Fine, you can ignore them. Um, while we're waiting for that, the backend is deployed on uh, render.com. Um, and this render.yaml file is kind of the config for that. So we have the Hasura service, um, the backend, like Node.js Express server that Hasura talks to for our business logic, essentially. Um, our two front ends, one of them which we can delete after we migrate the logic from there into the new one. Um, these are just built up as static apps. Uh, our Postgres database, and then like some environment variables um, and secrets and whatnot. So anytime we merge into master, this will automatically deploy um, and be available online. And then on pull requests for the front end, you'll get a preview URL to like what your changes look like um, on on your branch. Um, so some other stuff about the actual app. Um, right now, the React app is using Apollo, um, but we're going to scrap that for uh, URQL instead. It's a bit more lightweight. Um, ideally, I want to use Relay, but I know it's a bit uh, a bit more involved to learn how Relay works and stuff. So I don't want it to slow, to slow us down. So for now, we can just use URQL. Um, OK, cool. That's done. 
Now we can run the console. So here, uh, this is the Hasura console. Um, and this is where essentially we can uh, define our we can define our data model. So um, you can see these are what we have right now here uh, in terms of accounts, guilds, players. Um, this is the older data model. There's a, a, a PR that updates this um, to what to this newer version. What we need for the profile. So. We removed like the rank, link, sentences, and added the roles, time zone, a neogram number, and a list of skills. Um, I have to reach out to Paco to get this merged in. Um, there's still some one more update he needs to do for that. But yeah. Um, so for example, here, if you want to add a remote schema, we can go into here, click add, give it a name, and then give it a URL. So for example, if we want the Moloch subgraph. The API can add it as a remote schema. And then now all all the Moloch stuff is available in our uh, in our API as like um, what something we can query. So here you can even just see in the GraphQL Voyager. Yeah, this is like our full data model. So we have like accounts and all this sort of stuff. And then um, yeah, see that there. Uh, and then, so for example, now if you want to merge like uh, an account with um, a remote schema, what we can do is add a remote relationship. Um, uh, Moloch something. And then we can do it based off of um, member.id. Think, hold on. Well, whichever one it is, is just for example, like assuming member.id is their ETH address, um, we can create that and join it with our column um, identifier. And then we would have to filter it for type Ethereum, but you, you kind of get the idea. So once we set up that remote relationship, once we query for our players, within that player object, you'll be able to see like their Molochs, for example. Um, so some things we can just connect directly as remote schemas and join it that way. Um, for other things, we might need to set up like custom, uh, like business logic on top of it. So, um, in order to like filter it or, cause I know for Aragon, like it's a bit tricky. You have to first like load all this person's tokens and then load like the DAO that the tokens are a part of from a separate subgraph. Um, and then even then it's a bit tricky. So yeah, um, it's kind of just going to be figured out as we go. Uh, so yeah, actions here, you can see that this is one of the actions is a custom mutation update box profile. Um, if you want to create a new action, you can define it here. It's so like whatever you can have a query action, which is just for like looking up data or a mutation action which is actually changing something uh sample input output um doo -doo -doo. and then yeah, it actually has a code generator here too so you, what we can do is like go to typescript express and then it'll give you like the actual like boilerplate for this handler and also the type definitions um that you need so then you can just copy these put it in there um, all this sort of stuff. So yeah, as you're like working on all this stuff, um, in the actual code base, um, so 
So in the actual code base, you'll see that the Hasura metadata has been is slowly being updated. So here you can see like it added that new action that we created. Um, it added this new remote schema. Um, and yeah, anything anything that you change in the console, it'll kind of be reflected in the config. So this is what you can just make a PR with, and then uh, that's that. Um, so yeah, that's a run through of Hasura in the back end. Um, yeah, there's a utils file, which is just like some DID helpers or stuff, but we can use this to put some other like lib files we need. Um, next JS, you can look up the docs and how that works. Essentially, it's just a bunch of pages, and then each page gets rendered like uh, based on like the routing is based on the file system. Um, so yeah, that's about it for me. If there's any questions, I can answer them. But I actually have to jump over to the MetaMedia live stream, which is going to be happening in half an hour. So yeah, I can answer any quick questions if anyone has it. Otherwise, we can sync up later. Um, and hopefully this help, got help guides uh, some of the work that needs to be done. Is anything confusing? Probably a lot of it. But um, I think as, as long as you guys read the docs on for Hasura and anything else, um, and just ask me if, you, if there's anything you're confused about, it'll be good. Um, and yeah, so there's a bunch of issues here. A lot of them are going to be for backend stuff. Um, if you're interested in working on anything, just like to keep it easy, if it doesn't exist as an issue here, create one and assign it to yourself. Um, if it does exist here, assign it to yourself and like let everyone know. Um, and yeah, just ask for clarification where you need it. Um, yeah, so the new front end is set up like in, in the web folder, but it's just, you know, sample data. Um, so that can be as a basis to start building it up with Chakra UI, uh, which is the UI library we'll be using. That's this guy. Um, so yeah, here's, if you want to see what we can use in the UI, these docs are good as well. Do we have any priorities on those issues? Um, I would say, yes, we do. Um, but I know it's not clear right now. So I would say, um, like, you can go to the project view, right? It's there. Sorry, the what? The project view. Oh, yes, I believe so. Yeah. Um, I can probably set the priority um, here. So here I need to do this. Um, this is probably lower priority. Um, remote schemas, basic data. Um, yeah, like I'll, we'll probably need to create new issues for the actual front end stuff because this is mostly back end stuff. But um, yeah, uh, just ask, I guess. Um, but essentially, just based on what we talked about, like. What we what we need to build first for these profiles, um, that would be priority. Like if it's something that doesn't get us to a working profile, then it's probably not priority. Um, and yeah, feel you guys can all feel free to create new issues uh, to sort of scope out um, what else needs to be done here. Yeah, I think the challenge is how to split the front end work that, uh, what is this, like like three front end developers can work more or less in the same time without uh, an overlapping yeah, or disturbing even. Yeah, I think that's, it, it'll be important for to use like issues and make sure that everyone has assigned in GitHub like what they want to work on so there's no one stepping on anyone's toes. Um, one like decent way to split it would be like, one person to work on the design system and all the UI components, and then one person to work on the web front end, um, like in terms of the actual pages there. And then even at the web front end, some one person could work on the actual profile page, another person could work on the onboarding flow. Um, it, it's kind of just up to us to figure out. Uh, mm -hmm. 
if you guys if anyone wants to work on anything specific let me know and or like you know just assign yourself on github um you yeah. mentioned some some kind of like a plugin system or something that we can easily add other kind of modules to to the profile do you have an idea how this should be architected or we will leave it for now and, um, and introduce this later we'll probably leave it for now i'm more leaning towards having something like you know hackathon style working and mm -hmm. then uh later we'll figure out how we want to architect these modules because i imagine like we we would want other people to be able to publish their modules as well um or like write modules for this so yeah right now let's just hack it together um and then we can kind of see how we built it and then uh iterate on it and come up with a better mm -hmm. system yeah okay cool um yeah so if no one else has any questions uh call it here and yeah just ping me in the chat um if you need it and if i don't see it just dm me because like there's like i have like 50 notifications in the dow hack month thing and like it's hard to find it there so if you really need something just dm me otherwise i'll, I'll try to keep tabs on the my meta squad channel um yeah awesome thanks thanks so much no worries see you guys all right come on see you later